From an EDB perspective, I think uh, fintech being recognized by our Mauritian government as a focal point and something that they're striving towards. You know, building a fintech island is something new. And I think the EDB took on the ma massive task of, of working with something as, as, as new as a regulatory sandbox license or the RSL. Um, so the, the first kind of fintech firms went through this, the sandbox license, if you will. And I think the fact that the EDB went with them along through the journey kind of ensured the smooth running of the process. Um, I think the fact that uh, there's a close collaboration between EDB and the various sectors in the industry or stakeholders in the industry to make sure that fintech is also a line item and an agenda item on many events and activities. Uh, to make sure that we, we are able to, to affect and work very closely and collaborate with various stakeholders to, of, of achieving the, the Singapore of Africa status when it comes to the fintech space. So from that perspective, it's, it's always great to work with the EDB. It's always great to work with a, a government that's willing to, to push for change and innovative change. You know, fintech is a, is a new industry locally. You know, it's been around for a very few years. And I think we're seeing uh, quite a few successes coming through now. You know, Funkis, uh, uh, the, the, the most recognizable name in the, in the locally in the crowdfunding space, you know, they, they went through the EDB RSL and, they can, and they've got nothing but good things to say. So I think the fact that there is government support throughout this journey uh, on this fintech journey, I think is critical in making sure that we are able to achieve the, the status of being a fintech island in the future. Think, yeah, as an ex-entrepreneur, if you be, ever become an ex-entrepreneur, I think it's important from, uh, information, uh, from uh, information sharing and knowledge sharing sessions. Um, you know, if, if there, there always seems to, whichever ecosystem you look at, there always seems to be a slight disconnect between what government's trying to achieve and what they put out versus what the reality is on the ground. So for me, the benefit of these kind of uh, events is actually quite important. I think, you know, it, it shortens the bridge between the two kind of uh, sectors or industries, if you will, to make sure that what there's not only A, strategic alignment, but B, also the, the knowledge in the ecosystem to know what's available for the entrepreneurs, uh, for the technology or fintech entrepreneurs, and how do they go about engaging and taking advantage of kind of the incentives or programs that the uh, that, uh, government has put into place. You know, because you can put the, the, the best schemes out in the wild, um, but if nobody utilizes them, then it's kind of going to go nowhere. So for me, the, the crux of this is, you know, when you have 250, 200 entrepreneurs in a room intermingling with, uh, with government institutions, sharing their experiences, sharing their challenges, their successes, I think it breeds a, a, a culture of openness and a culture of collaboration and, and genuinely understanding f from which, w where both parties are coming from. Because you know, a lot of the time I'll, I'll grow up with, with government organizations is you, we can't quite understand what they're trying to achieve, but that could be the, the messaging's lost in, uh, somewhere in, in the filter. But these kind of uh, uh, events help align those expectations and realities, and I think it strengthens the ecosystem collectively as a whole.